In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install this farmhouse sink into this sink base. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So installing a farmhouse sink can be a daunting task, but we're gonna walk you through it. So let's get started. The first step to installing this farmhouse sink is to get the dimensions of the front of the farmhouse sink. So if we measure right across the front, we got 35 and 7 eighths. And then if we measure down, we got exactly nine inches. So we gotta cut those dimensions out of the front of the sink base. I'm gonna take off the cabinet door so they're not in the way of the installation. I'm now gonna find the center of the sink base and this is gonna be a 36 inch farmhouse sink. So I need a 39 inch base cabinet to support it. So be sure you get the correct size sink base for your sink. Now that I found the center of the sink base, I'm gonna measure over to where the center of the 35 and 7 eighths is gonna be the direct center of the sink base. We're gonna put the layout right over top of this tape and you can also use masking tape. It might be a little easier to see the pin marks that's gonna be on the masking tape versus blue painter's tape. But this is a lighter blue painter's tape, so it isn't gonna matter. So we're just gonna tape right over those marks. Now I'm gonna take an ink pen and put the layout right over that blue painter's tape to where we got to cut out. I'm gonna measure off the edge of the cabinet over to get the lines to mark the sides here. And now I'm just going to take a straight edge and mark right down the marks I made. I'm now going to take my straight edge and line it up to those nine inch marks that I came down from the top of the sink base and make a straight line. Now I'm going to quickly just double check to make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to cut this out. I'm now going to take this masking tape and just extend the edges just because I'm going to, have to run my saw down around the edge of this sink base and I don't want to scuff up the paint. I'm now going to use my circular saw and cut down the lines that we made. I'm going to wear my eye protection and I'm also going to have my helper hold a shot back right behind the saw and collect the dust as I cut. I'm now going to take my jigsaw and finish cutting these corners out. All right, now we're going to take that out. And it looks like we've got some of these plastic hinges up here. Okay. And the scariest part of the job is over, in my opinion. So now we're going to remove this masking tape. Before I go any further, I'm going to dry fit the sink into place just to make sure everything looks right. All right, everything's dry fit and looks really good. So now we're going to take this out, then build a frame around here to support the sink. In order to build the frame that's going to go around this sink to support it, we must first measure from where this metal ends on the side of the farmhouse sink and to where it wraps around the back here. So if we take a measurement from here back, we got 14 and a quarter heavy. So we're going to come about 14 and 3 eighths back on each side with a block and then run a support brace from block to block to support the back of the sink. All right, I'm now just going to put this together like so in order to support that farmhouse sink and I'm going to pre-drill and use these two and a half inch decking screws to support everything. When it comes to putting that apron in to hold the sink, I know I want this sink to come out an inch and a half to match the overhang of my countertop, which is going to be an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do first is just measure back inch and a half, put a pencil mark here, and then what I'm going to do is measure over to that pencil mark, and I got three and a half inches. So I know I need to bring that apron in three and a half inches from this face before I attach it to the cabinet. Just going to measure back the three and a half inch mark and mark it on my cabinet. So we know that's where we start our two by four apron. I'm now just going to take my apron and place it right in to this sink base. I'm now going to line this up with the mark we made at the three and a half inches and then hold it into place. And now I'm just going to take one of my quick grips and clamp that right there so it doesn't move. And these are the same quick grips I used to install these cabinets. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you checking out the card in the top right hand corner of the screen. 
And now we need to drop this down just about a sixteenth of an inch to make up for the flange of this sink. So I'm just gonna hold this square here to make sure it's sitting down about right. Now that I got the apron sitting about where I want it, I'm just going to pre-drill in through this apron and into the side of the cabinet before I place the screws. And I'm gonna place about four screws into this board into the cabinet. I'm now just gonna do the same to the other side. I'm now gonna set the sink in here to dry fit it one last time with this apron in. And that, my friends, looks really good, but there is definitely another step that I gotta do before I let this stay here. Just so you're aware, this is just a blue protective film on this sink, and I'm gonna remove it once I move into the house, so I'm gonna keep it on here while I'm working so I don't risk scratching it. And also, if you wanna buy this sink, it's made by Delta. The link is in the description below, and it's a great sink. It comes with lifetime warranty, but right now I'm gonna lift it up right out of the way. Before I silicone the sink into place, I'm gonna first install these items into these drain pipes. These are an inch and a half drain pipes, and this one at top is for this air admittance valve, and this acts as the vent for the sink, and the one below is just for the regular drain, which is gonna get this adapter. This is gonna give me an area in which it's gonna come down from the sink and go right into the main plumbing. So I'm gonna show you how to install this stuff, and I'm just gonna cut it with this little Sawzall, so the items we'll need is some primer, PVC cement, the air admittance valve, and this is an inch and a half street elbow, and this is just an inch and a half adapter for the drain. I'm gonna first begin by taking my Sawzall and cutting these off about two inches away from the back of the cabinet. I'm now gonna deburr the pipes using this utility knife. I'm now going to unbox this sure vent, and if you want to pick this up, there's a link for it in the description below as well. So this is a pretty simple device. It's going to come with this adapter, and this can go into two inch pipe or one and a half inch pipe. So that's where the street adapter comes in because it's going to just plug right into the top of that street adapter like so. Then this is going to thread down into the adapter like so. I'm going to begin by priming up the pipe and then priming up the fittings. I'm just gonna glue this street elbow to the adapter. Just push it together and twist just about a quarter turn and hold it really tight. And again, this is where it's gonna thread down into the adapter. I'm now gonna place glue around the pipe here and glue this elbow, and now I'm gonna glue it to where it's setting up vertically. So right like that. And just so you're aware, this pipe goes into the wall and elbows up to this pipe, and then it ends right here at this valve. I'm now gonna attach this adapter to this drain pipe. I'm now gonna remove the plastic off of this valve, and then I'm just gonna put Teflon around the threads of this, and you're gonna to wanna to go in a clockwise fashion so when you tighten it down, it doesn't remove the Tef tape and then just thread it down into that fitting. All right, so all of this is installed, and just so you know, these don't last forever. They last about 10 years or so, it depends on the manufacturer, but how this works, it's a one-way valve. The air goes through this hole, and it only goes in and doesn't let air come out, so that way it traps the sewer gases from escaping into the house. And now, we can't install the drain into this hole until the countertop is installed over top of the sink. And also these water lines, we can't address these until the faucet is installed in the countertop as well. So we gotta wait for the countertop to cut these down and install the faucet onto them. I'm now gonna install this sink into the sink base permanently. In order to do so, I got 100% silicone caulk here, and I'm just gonna run it around that apron that I built. And once that sets up, it ain't moving anywhere. Now that we're sitting on that silicone, we need to now make sure that this sink is sitting exactly where we wanted it. So let's double check to make sure we're at an inch and a half. So that needs to go back just a little bit. So let's check there. That is right at an inch and a half right there. 
So come over here, double check the same thing, and we're sitting exactly where we want it to stay permanently. So this is gonna sit here, and once that silicone sets up, it ain't going anywhere. Here are all the things that came with this sink, and I'd like to mention it did come with these undermount clips. Now these can be attached to the countertop and then attach the sink to the countertop when you go to set it all at once. But in this case, I'm setting it with the piece of wood apron that I made. And now this is all the other things. This is your drain. This is a cap for your drain. This is like a cutting board that goes on the sink. And then this is like a big strainer that goes in the bottom of the sink. And this is a piece that folds over top of the sink that you can use to dry your dishes so that way they're not sitting down in the sink. So pretty nice stuff. I cannot install this until the countertops are installed. That was recommended by the countertop installer. So just in case they had to shift it around for whatever reason, I guess they could without having the plumbing pipes hooked up. Now, if you wanna see how I installed all these cabinets, check out this video, it'll help you out.